Hi everyone, I'm Farida. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here, welcome back to the Dental Radiology. It's been a long time since my last video, so if you find this video helpful, feel free to share it. I need a lot of energy to go on, so please give me a thumbs up. The headline we will talk about is Radiography Imaging for Dental Implant. As we all know, diagnostic imaging examination, the radiography prescription, must be guided by history and clinical examination. As always, I tell my students, never ask me about the radiograph before you tell me about the patient history, chief complement, and anything I need to know before the radiograph. It helps for maximizing the diagnostic and selecting the right radiograph for the patient's situation. We have three phases of imaging for a dental implant. The pre-surgical phase, when we decide a radiograph is needed in the edentalist site, for assessing the bone quality, quantity, anatomical structures. The next phase is the surgical phase, during the surgery and the third phase would be after the surgery or the follow-up stages. So how do I decide which radiography is better for the patient? We need to know the advantage and limitation of each imaging technique, starting from the interoral radiography. It is often the first imaging modality including the per radiograph, bite wing, and the occlusal imaging. The per radiography is the most common radiograph used in all phases of dental implant. Very excellent resolution for seeing the details like PDL laminadura. It has low financial cost and low radiation. The per radiography can help to evaluate the bone healing at the dentalist site any retained root or perapical pathology. The anatomic coverage for seeing the anatomical structures is less than a panoramic radiograph. It can show the mesial and distal dimension, the vertical dimension or the vertical distance to the adjacent anatomical borders, but we know it is a two-dimensional image. It doesn't provide information on the buccal lingual dimension. And also, different tube angulation can cause elongation and foreshortening of the structures. So the measurement for the dental implant is not accurate. Maybe you would ask, we can use the occlusal radiograph and see the buccal lingual dimension. Yes, it is possible, but for the maxilla, we have the superimposition of the anatomical structures. And as for the mandible, the base of the mandible is usually wider in the buccal lingual dimension than the alveolar process. So the result would be overestimation of the buccal lingual dimension. Well, what about the panoramic radiography? Well, it does the coverage a bigger field of view. We have the sinus, the nasal floor, the interval canal, and we have the mesial distal and the vertical dimension. However, as we know, the ghost image that are superimposed and technical sensitivity in the patient positioning can cause panoramic errors. And also, it doesn't provide any information of the buccal lingual dimension. All of this can be the disadvantage of this technique for a dental implant. So now what? Is the 2D imaging being replaced by the 3D image for dental implantology or not? American Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Radiology has a guideline or a recommendation or you can say a selection criteria for imaging before and after a dental implant. I have the recommendation right here. You can go back or you can take a screenshot for later. So what does this guideline tell us? The panoramic radiograph is the modality choice for initial evaluation of the dentalist site. 
the interaural per app grid graph can be supplemental to the information from the panoramic. So in the initial examination, panoramic radiography can be supplemental with the interaural per app radiograph. No CBCT in this level. And the next step, the radiograph examination of any potential site for a dental implant should include a cross-sectional imaging, the CBCD scan, if placing for any bone graft, bone augmentation, sinus lift, evaluation of a prior trauma, or assessment of an impacted teeth in the area of interest, CBCT must be taken. In a post-operative step, after placing the dental implant, in the absence of any clinical sign or symptom, or I can say for a symptomatic implant, an intraoral preapical radiograph or a panoramic radiograph can be used. Panoramic for um, when we have too many dental implants. And if any implant mobility, altered sensation, implant displacement has occurred, CBCT must be taken with a small field of view. And for the future follow-ups, for any asymptomatic dental implant, an intraoral per apical radiography is only recommended. And in the existence of any sign or symptoms, CBCT is necessary. I will continue this section in my next videos, so stay tuned. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. If it was helpful, please feel free to share it and press that bell button for getting notifications for my next videos. Keep smiling and have an awesome day.